Are we up and running? Looks like it. Good morning, everybody. Not quite sure why the restaurant there has got their sign turned on at 8 o'clock in the morning, the new neon sign. <laughs> Maybe it's got no switch. I don't know. It was on last night when I came in late after getting my dinner, too. It could be that they've maybe forgot to build in a switch. I don't know. Not foggy. It's you know, a bit overcast today. That's all. It's overcast. It might rain later this evening. Not quite sure. It's not as cold as it has been. It has been cold, but not today. Today's reasonable. Do we have cone alignment? I'm not sure. Is there a cone hidden behind there? I don't know. It's up to you. We either have cone alignment or no cones. I don't know. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Thursday morning, 8 o'clock on a Thursday. Now, what am I doing with this? I just came in from outside. I went to the pool, you know, got, you cut short my swim. I can't do the full kilometer when there's a stream. There's no way. It just makes it just too, too difficult. So I just do 800 meters and skip the coffee on the way back. So paper is out. Paper is out for one printer today upstairs. It's Ayumi-san. And she's working on, give me a minute, I'll get this. She's working on Spring Fuji, number 51 in our catalog. Okay, what we're doing today, we're going to pick up where we semi-screwed up the other day. Remember? Those of you who were here for that day in infamy, I pasted down the tracing for her hair and at that point realized that I had forgotten to trace the, the lines, the not the gray lines, the, the flow lines that are in her hair. So we have a corrected version today. We'll wash that off and paste the new one down. Highlights, yes. Okay. Before we do that, we have to open a package. Here's the uh, so. Here's the hair with the highlights. We have a package to open first, and then, my God, show and tell later today. We have they've been building up while we were playing around with those bird books. We have been building up other stuff for show and tell, so we can pick it random today. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a couple of big ones. You all know where this is from. It's a package of prints from one of our printers. name obvious Kubota it is he is working overtime for us these days <laughs> he is so happy about the work we give him you know because from his point of view it's so easy easy meaning they're fairly small scale and also we don't ask for like 300 copies at a time we can't invest that much in advance you know we can't buy a 10-year supply of a print but we can buy a one-year supply so he's really happy because of that, you know, those two things. For him, this is just, it's just, I know, I can't say kindergarten work, that's not true. He does it properly, but for him it's easy, very, very easy, stress-free. Now this is Kubota, Kubota. Not sure if you've seen this one here. You know, you've seen me open packages from the printers. You see me do this all the time. I'm not so sure if you've seen this one before. I don't know. Have we had this one on an opening before? I'm not sure. It's nominally by Hiroshige. It is or not, we don't know. I don't know where I got this. I think I have a Taisho print of this design 
and I suspect that it's a Taisho publisher just slapping something together from bits and pieces and slapping Hiroshige's name on it. It could be, it could be a reproduction of something from Hiroshige's era, but the odds are probably perhaps not. Simple and clean. This kind of stuff still is popular in our shop, you know. It doesn't make any sense. The birds actually fly in that kind of orientation. Would they fly under an overhanging wave? I mean, the thing itself makes no sense. It's clearly just simply play. Play with design, play with color, play with paper. This is really for Dave here. This is what this whole genre, this whole thing is all about. It's just playing with these beautiful objects, the beautiful materials, the beautiful you know, tools, and then you end up with a beautiful object. You know? I think I might have mentioned a few weeks ago that there was an interview here. A lady came from a magazine called Croissant. How's that for Japanese? Kuro Wasan. And uh, they sent me a, a, a clip of the story yesterday. It's gonna, we're going to get four pages in their magazine for March, which will be published, I guess, in about two weeks. You know, long story short, so they're interviewing me, and they think that Dave is an ukiyo-e fan. They think I like ukiyo-e, the old Japanese art and the Tokaido Road and all this stuff, and they think I was interested in the pictures. And we'd been having the interview for a while before I realized that they were misunderstanding what this was all about. So I, I grabbed a print, not this one, but a print similar to this, one of the more decorative prints in the shop, and I grabbed it, put it in the paper, and showed them the light and all the embossing and stuff like this. And I, I, you know, they were a little bit disappointed because what they had done was, we talked about this, in order to make the interview go well, they had sent an expert down to chat with me. So the interview wouldn't be QA, QA, the interview would be conversation. And this expert was a lady who has published a number of books about ukiyo-e. So she thought she was going to have a discussion with a fellow traveler who enjoys ukiyo-e. And it turned out, I think part way along I said, ukiyo-e. And, and she like, she did a little sort of double take. David had just told her, ukiyo-e, nah, I couldn't care less. I don't know, I'm not interested in that stuff. <laughs> and it's true. I'm interested in these objects, these objects. But the conversation did go in an interesting way then, because what we did do, or what happened next was, I pointed out to her, that most Westerners, or t t to really generalize here, Westerners in general, and the Japanese in general, maybe Chinese too, I'm not quite sure how they would fit in, have a completely different uh, history and feeling of what these prints were about. In both the cultures, prints in the old days, it was the printing business, the show. It was how information was transmitted. So that's fine, before printing presses and stuff came on. Look at that. When you make it wet before you wash it off, isn't that cool? Look at this. But I mentioned to her that the two cultures treat the whole thing then in a very different way. If you think about printmaking back in the West, all through the, the 1600s, 1700s, 1800s, all the way up, even maybe till contemporary time, printmaking in the West was about delivery of messages, and a lot of it was social protest. It was uh, a way for people with no power to get messages transmitted to other members of the community. So a lot of it was about social protest. And in the East, in Japan specifically, anybody who tried social protest back in the Edo era, well, we know where they ended up. There was no such thing as acceptable social protest. So back in the... Japanese tradition, printmaking was partly transmission of information, books and stuff, but mostly simply for the beauty. So Dave here, he's not so interested in the content of the images, the content of the prints. Dave is interest in, interested in the object itself. That's why that print I just showed you, that rings my bell, it's fine. There's no meaning to it. It's simply a beautiful object. Okay, goodbye to that one and we'll put down the new one. Oh, I've got to trim it first before we put it on.
know somewhere in here there's a straight edge here. Yes. Oh, chunky applesauce. Hey, cool. Thank you very much, sir. This is a gentleman who was here in the shop yesterday. Did get home in time to catch. <laughs> Soka, so you've flown. When you say home, you don't mean the hotel here in Tokyo. You mean you're back home, actually. Wow. Talk about you know, time slip. This gentleman yesterday afternoon was here chatting. <laughs> we had a good conversation, I think. <laughs> it was one of those, you know, what's the word? Uh, it was a domino conversation to, a, to, a, to one extent. And this happens all the time here also, all the time. We were here in the shop yesterday. It was at lunchtime, I guess. I was spelling off for takeo. I wasn't supposed to be in the shop yesterday. I was supposed to be upstairs. But the takeo went off for lunch, so I was spelling in for lunch. I was sitting down here with my lunch ready to eat. Couldn't eat it because people were in. And there was a couple browsing, blah, 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 quietly, discussing with themselves, looking at prints. Then this, this young man came in, chunky applesauce. This man came in. And he, I forget how it started. Maybe he said, did you say, no, you weren't talking about YouTube. You mentioned Twitch streams, I said. He, you, you said you'd been talking about the Twitch stream. And I'm like, hi, hi, hello, how you doing? Then the other couple, because they'd heard this, they now realize it's okay to say this. So they turned around and said, oh, for us, it was YouTube. <laughs> so, so it's sort of a, a domino conversation. A couple who wouldn't have actually maybe started a conversation because they're kind of shy and polite and not wanting to intrude on me. Once the conversation has started, they're happy to jump in. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I gotta get this right. If I don't get this right, I'm in deep trouble here. So here we go. Okay, back to the previous conversation. Social protest. When I meant social protest, what I meant was that people who are trying to communicate stuff that there is something going on, we don't like the way it is now. We would like to have things done in a different way. Propaganda, I, I don't know what word to use, you know. The point being communication of sort of political information, semi-political information, is what I was sort of getting at. When I said social protest, I meant we see things happening and we don't like the way they're happening and we want it's like it's like the okay, what do you call then the, the political cartoons in a typical newspaper? A newspaper these days, they've got the funny page where the things are funny for ha ha ha, let's laugh. Then there's usually an editorial cartoon or a political cartoon. What do you call an editorial cartoon? When I said social protest, I think that's what I was meaning. Somebody who is trying to point out something that they don't like in contemporary society. So I think that's what I was getting at. And again, please understand, I was really, really, really generalizing. All Western stuff is social protest. All Japanese art is decorative. It's not the, the true story. So I, please, I was generalizing, of course. You know. Yeah, the conversation was fun yesterday. How many streams left until my trip to Canada? That's a good, good question. Well, there's one today, Thursday. Saturday, I'll be here. Monday, I guess I should be here. I am really super busy right now, but there's no reason not to be here. So there's three. This one, one more, and one more. So after this, there are two streams left before the Canada trip. What I was looking at with the glass, I was just trying to make sure I had the registration mark cut. I had to cut that paper exactly on the registration mark. And my eyes these days, you know, uh, whatever. I was just trying to make sure the registration mark was cut properly. Don't get confused by the drawing here. I just used the back side of the paper. I'm sorry. You know, when I was at 7-Eleven getting the copy, I ran it through once first to check the alignment in the place. 
so don't get confused by this on the back. And also too, I know if you're judging and stuff, forget it today. This is a three millimeter, a three millimeter. It's a three momme agampi. There's no peel here. To disappoint you, I'm sorry. There will be no peel. I got to rub some off the back because it's thin, but there's going to be no dramatic peel. I'm sorry. I'll show you over in the corner here. We can you can just see it just pulls off. It might, oh, it might peel. Should we try it? I don't know. It's a three. I don't want to do it too much. Let's try it. Let's try it. I don't think it's going to peel. No, you can see it doesn't pull up enough to grab. Look, 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 look. No, it's not worth bothering. Look, look, look. It doesn't pull enough to grab. Once I attempt to peel, I get graded. Fair enough. <laughs> you, you do as you wish. It's all right. So here we are. Now we can see the, the klutz up the, the, that I made the other day. I had forgotten to trace in the highlights of her hair, which of course have to be cut away from this block. There is a base tone on the print. The, the lines that form the key lines go in a mass under her hair. I think we've still got that block here. We can see it. So, where are we here? This is the key block. The lines of the key block go in a mass under her hair. So they will be there in faint gray. And they have the real benefit by putting them on this block. The benefit is that this part of the paper will get flattened because it's printed. Like, why do we have this base tone under her hair? Once the paper gets flattened, it's much easier to make a nice, good, rich, dense black when we're printing the hair itself. So it's got that extra benefit. Okay, let's start chopping wood. Find the spot. Hang on a sec. Give me a minute here. Where are we going to start? Where are we going to start? Whatever. Somewhere out here. Let's just start in the middle here. Might be too close, I've got to focus here, no idea. A good question, someone's asking, how is the printer going to avoid the pigments and stuff accumulating in those narrow valleys? That's a good question. There's no easy answer. I know 
they have to be cut clean and sharp. If you cut them roughly or something with funny edges, the ink will, will glob in there many more. The pigment itself has to be really smooth and fine, no, no globiness in the, in the pigment. Then also the brush hair. The brush hair is going to be the brush hair is going to be stiff so that the pigment gets brushed across the block, but at the very last stage, we brush very delicately, sa, sa, and the tip of the hairs are going to have to be really, really soft. This brush I've got right here, it's a washing brush. It's not really done properly. It's stiff, but it doesn't have the tips softened. You can see the tips are all quite hard. So you need a brush that's very nicely softened so that the last few strokes of the brush can pull all the pigment out of those little valleys. But it's tough, absolutely it's tough. When they all go in one direction, you can do it. In this case, most of the hair valleys, they go in one direction. So the, br the printer will move the brush at the final strokes along the valleys rather than against them. But there are a couple that are the other way. So it's going to be touch and go. And some prints will get spoiled. Probably some prints will get spoiled. Do I use some oil to make it clearer for carving? That's going to happen right now, just as I'm about to start. We've got this. If I put a bit of oil here on my finger, rub it in, and that's what we're going to do right now. I don't want to put oil all over the whole thing because it would tends to make the paper loose, and it's going to take me quite a long time to carve all this. So you just oil up bit by bit by bit the part that you're going to cut. And look at that. It doesn't get any better than this. My God, look at this. Let's have a go. Where are we going to start? This block is not as hard as it could be. Oh, it's also the flask has come too low.
It is. It's a bit softer than we need, and there's a bit of a uh, compromise going on here. We want hard wood because there's going to be some fairly fine lines here, but if it's too hard, we won't be able to print a smooth, dense block if the wood's too hard. So we need a wood that's, it's got to be a color block, actually, not a key block. So this is a bit of a paradox here with these hairlines. For the key blocks, where there's only thin lines, we want a good hard piece of wood. For color blocks, where there's flat color, we need a softer wood. This is sort of both, these blocks for here. So it's a bit of a difficult choice. Softness for the smooth black printing, hardness to preserve the fine lines. These hairlines on uh, these hair flourishes, of course, this is a huge trademark of this artist, Okada-san, Okada Yoshio. Anybody who's seen those previous videos I made about the first prints that I bought when I came to Japan, the Okada Yoshio prints, you recognize that series of, of ladies from the Genji Monogatari from the Heian era. And he threw hair everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. It's kind of his trademark, wild flourishes of black hair.
good, good video this morning. Do we need good light? I'm struggling with the light a little bit. <laughs> the idea now, now that we're close, we're, uh, what is it, six days away from me heading off. It would really be nice for our planning and our scheduling here if I could get this block finished before heading to Canada, then we'll have one of our printers, Mr. K, he's going to start test printing it. He's going to start proofing it while I'm away. If I can't get this finished, it's okay. Here's other work. We've got lots of work for all of our printers right now, of course. But what I would like is for the first proofing of this to happen while I'm away so that when I get back, we can have a look at it, work on any block adjustments, and that we can get this ready and into the shop for spring. We're so desperate for, for good, interesting prints, you know. So I really, really, really want to get this thing into the catalog now as soon as possible. I've really been not lazy with it, but I've been, you know, just letting it slide because other work took priority. But, uh, but with spring now coming up, this is now going to become the priority job. So. so there might be a couple of late nights this week to get this thing done. We'll see. There's also the signature, Okada-san signature, which I haven't done yet, but uh, that can come later, that's okay. Well, Surfer will be a high difficulty printing job. I hope not. It depends on how well I've done the carving. Remember, there's lots of overlaid colors here. We had the blue, the blue waves, then on top of them we had different levels of blue. If I've done my job well, if I've got the registration clean and clear, then it shouldn't be too difficult to print. The difficult job is going to be the key block, getting it soft and gentle, the facial features without being slammed. The key block will be the, it'll be the key to this one. 
If the key block prints well, the rest should go well, assuming we get good steady paper. Is the next print for the Hokusai series public knowledge? I'm torn between what to do. We have the 12 of them chosen. The order is chosen. Unlike something like the Kyoto Journey, where I myself don't even know what's coming up, the Hokusai series is organized and laid out. Does everybody want to know, or would they rather just see that as they arrive? I'm torn at the moment. Give me your, your feedback on this, and I'll, you know, I'll think about it as we go forward. We know what's coming up. Should we expose it? Should I put the whole plan for the whole 12 on the website? I have mixed feelings about that. Not quite sure what to do. There's two aspects to this, and uh, there's a story about my mother, and I'll, if we go back, I don't know how many years ago this is, 15 years ago or so, I had been visiting Vancouver w there with my brother and sister, and before I came back to Japan, I had a conference with my brother and sister. The next year, the next visit, would be my parents. I think it was their 60th wedding anniversary. It might have been 50th, might have been 60th. I don't remember. And we had decided, the three of us, me, my brother, and sister, we decided we were going to buy them a cruise. They were going to go up on a cruise to Alaska, whatever, as, as part of their 60th wedding anniversary. And my brother cooked the idea up. He said, yeah, well, we, the three kids, should go with them. They would really enjoy that. So he and my sister started to cook up the idea that what they would do is, we would tell our parents, we've bought you a cruise for your anniversary, and away you go. And on the day of the cruise, we would all go down to the dock, and we would say goodbye, and they would head off. But the moment the gangplank ran up, Simon's idea, my brother's idea, was that we should buy tickets for the three of us too, but don't tell them. And then at the last minute, jump on the boat and join them, and they would be, oh, what a wonderful surprise, that kind of stuff. This was his idea what to do, to actually go with them, but don't tell them, make it a last minute surprise. There's a point to this story, relax. I said, no, there's a better way to do this. They know already that we're buying them a cruise for next year. That pleasure is there. They know this is happening. My mother is not going to be so happy to be separated from her family. Dave is over here from Japan. My brother's over from Germany. She'd rather be with her family. Tell her now. Tell her now that you're going on the cruise, the two of them, and that the three of us will join her. Don't try this last-minute silly surprise. Tell her now, and for the whole next year, she's going to enjoy the mood and the anticipation. Oh my God, next year I'm going with my kids and my family on this cruise. She can enjoy it for the full year. Instead of just one last-minute silly surprise, which would be fun, but it's not worth a whole year's pleasure. So, how does that story relate to this Hokusai thing? <laughs> okay. So, the 12 prints are coming up. Do we leave it as surprise at the moment you open the package and you get an instant, oh yeah, that's nice, or do we show what's coming up so that you can roll it around your tongue and feel the mood and enjoy it? I think I'm talking myself into the idea that I should put all 12 prints on the website. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let me know your feedback. Let me know your feedback. Let me know. <laughs> There's another aspect to this too. There is another aspect. The 12 prints were partly chosen by Azat Mokohankan and partly chosen by the curators over at the BM. They sent a list of 12. I actually edited it. I said, I think it was eight or nine. I ended up choosing from theirs and I put in three or something from ours because we had a way to organize the themes. And they said, okay, that's sure, that's okay, that's fine. But among the ones that they chose was one print that is so stupendously difficult, it actually is impossible. And it's still in the list of prints being made. And when we divided up the carving job, the work for Dave, the work for our associate here, Chonsan, and the work for Asuka Sensei, those two guys just, we had the 12 prints on the table and they're picking, and there's no way, nobody touched that one. And of course, because I'm the boss, I'm the last man standing, the 12th print, there it was on the table. I have to pick it up. And as I sit here right now, telling you about this, that image, I think it's uncarvable. Absolutely, I think it's uncarvable. 
And all of us think the same thing. What is it doing in this series? What is it there for? How is it there? What was the old publisher anticipating? It's actually not carvable. And yet here it is, we've put it into our schedule and it's coming up sometime. I think it's this one for me for, for next January or something, I don't remember. And if we announce that in advance, there it is, then we get closer, 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 tick, 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 Dave's deadline comes. And what happens when he gets to that point, puts it on his block and can't carve it? So my viewpoint is I would much rather not talk about that one. When it does come time to make it, I will give it a try, maybe in private and then consult with the curators and just say, look, this isn't going to happen. Let's pick something else. And this is actually Dave's pet little theory about why that publishing project didn't get made back in the old day. A number of those prints, a huge number of those prints, are, I think, not carvable at that scale. Not now, and not then. So we'll see how it goes. I don't know. spot there. Well, so you're not going to get to hear about decisions. You are going to hear, I'll be doing four of those prints. So I'll be doing them, of course, on the Twitch stream. I'm doing this surfer now, wrapping it up. I'll be starting the tracing of the next Hoxai print, January, February, March, April, May, June. Mine is published in July. My next one has to publish in July. So it's printing in June. So it'll be carving in May. April, May. So when we get a couple of months now, during the April, May time, Twitch streams, I will be carving the next Hoxai. Absolutely. It won't be that stunningly difficult one, but I will be carving my next print. I think it has cats. The Sunburst, that's the last one. We're saving that for the punch at the end. The lightning death bolt, I can tease it, the lightning death bolt is going to be the last one. So I've given away a few things there. Anyway, that's the plan as it stands. We were debating whether to opening with the death bolt, but we figured let's close as strongly as possible. So let's close that way. So, and that's Asuka Sensei. He got that one. We all wanted it because that one looks like so much fun, but Asuka Sensei got it. He chose it. We had to defer to him, you know. He's older than both of us, so we had to defer. So he got his first choice of what he wanted to do. You know?
flask is annoying. What's happened with the flask? It's waiting for me to, to do some adjustments on it. The flask is held from a, from a string. It's a kind of a cord, a wound cord. And over time, with the weight of the flask, the weight of the water, it has just stretched a little bit. And the flask is now hanging about yay much lower than it should be. And what's happening, and you can hear it going on right now, the, this is a little bit bigger block than what we normally carve recently. When I carved the hook side block, it's a little one. It goes round and around here under the scope. It doesn't interfere with the flask. This piece of wood is quite a bit larger. And as I rotate it, what it's doing is instead of sliding under the flask as it should do, the flask has sagged down a little bit and the block is banging into the bottom of the flask. So of course, just common sense, it's waiting for me to get up there. I think what happened was last time this happened, I stuck a pencil in there. <laughs> it's, it's waiting for me to get up there and do the next level of adjustment. Real soon now. <laughs> Well, no, Ayano-san, I guess it's Thursday, so Ayano-san should be here soon, getting close to 9 o'clock. And uh, she won't know anything about it when she comes in this room here, the shop. But once she starts her work later this morning, she's going to discover there's been a change in the software last night. I put another update through to the uh, accounting software, accounting to the, to the order processing software last night. She's been, uh, the software is working pretty well, but it's a work in progress as we learn about our systems and as things change at the post office or as we just get more experience of what we're doing, we change our software, you know, to, to suit what the way we want to do, do our jobs. And there's, a, there's been a bit of a discrepancy between when she sends orders out for being weighed and when Ome, our shipping center, actually puts the weights into the system, stuff like this. There's been a bit of a discrepancy in how they think that should be done. And it's been causing Ayano-san a little bit of uh, a headache. She doesn't know when the weight is entered, you know, whatever. So, so I, she's been asking me, Dave, can we, can we maybe build this into the system? And it, actually, the thing she was asking was actually fairly a major change. It needed a... Well, at least it needed a change in one of the database tables and then some code to match. Sometimes when there's a, a change she wants, it's just a little bit of code, but it doesn't change the underlying data structure. I can do that in a few minutes. But once you've got a change that requires changing items in a table in the database, your data structure is changing, now it's a bit more, more complicated. Other modules are going to be affected. You can't just do this change in a couple of seconds and just toss it back to her. But last night I did this. I made the change in the database tables, went through, checked other modules, did some quick testing. It seems okay. So the thing that I told her, I am a son, you know, I don't think that's actually going to happen in the near future because that's a kind of a tough one to change. I had said that to her. Anyway, I implemented it last night. So she will, she won't see it first thing in the morning, but once she is going through her day's work bit by bit by bit, she will see a new feature in her, on her screen there, and it's the one that she was asking for. So, uh, so sometime today, she's going to come running to me. And she's going to say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Or she's going to say, something's wrong with the program. <laughs> so, 
I think I tested it well enough, but I don't know. Pleasant work in the evenings, you know. Uh, all day long, it's it's not so much carving these days, but it's mostly business stuff. We spent hours yesterday on the contract, the negotiations, the contract for this print. We we have a contract with the Okada-san's nephew to handle to handle the the licensing for the Okada for the for the Okada Yoshio prints, you know. And they're 100% on board with us. But there's a lawyer there who is the and Okada-san's wife is still alive. So the lawyer who has her power of attorney, that's the person where we're actually dealing with here. And he's a lawyer. He's cool. He's really helpful with this. He's friendly. Nothing, I don't say it in a negative sense. He's a lawyer. He's a lawyer. But he is a lawyer. And we got to get this right. So we've gone back and forth and back and forth with the, the terms of this contract. And I spent hours on that yesterday. I was supposed to be working. And what I'm doing is working on a, a legal contract in Japanese that I sort of understand and sort of don't understand. And a, a day of that, you know, and uh, get to the end of the day and you're ready for something else. So a couple of hours of light programming, putting in her update, that's fine. I can handle that easily. That's my relaxation. <laughs> How does a lawyer relax in the evening? He writes code. Come on, come on, Flask, you're okay. How's our time? Oh, it's I have time in a minute. So, so, so. <coughs> oh, 
here she is. Look at this. Look at this. Ten seconds ago, I said it's nearly Ayano time, or maybe twenty seconds ago. Come say hello. Come and say hello. Ah, so? Now you train, you mean? I don't know, just a uh, you know, gummy day this morning and then prep, prep for dinner and what prep else? Uh, laundry and stuff. Oh, you I mean, your own life, you mean? Ah, You're so, talking so, about, so, yeah, so. she has her own life, whatever. So, so. <laughs> so, 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 so. How are things? Okay, good, good. good. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> the last few days, Ayano san and I, one of the ladies who works upstairs, the lady who works with Ayano san, she's off uh, this week ho- uh, on a break, she's off for a couple of weeks. And uh, our Yama san is off today. He said, Oh, may he's off tomorrow. Then <coughs> so I understand, and I actually, we've been sharing. We've been, we're, we're the only two left upstairs there. So, so sorry. Your mother's son is around. So <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really, really quiet. I know this is because it's February, people are like, I'm going to Canada. The other lady took medical time off. These things are happening in our slowest, slowest time. Right. So, this is, you know. And uh, that, I have to think about when I'm going to take um, Yes, so that, that, that was the next thing I was going to say. When it's your turn. Yeah. So. She's waiting for April to take her time off, you know, and I'm saying, Ayano-san. And I was thinking to take, you know, uh, <coughs> holidays in February, mm. then I didn't expect that it's going to overlap. Uh, With everything else that's <laughs> so, happening, so, so. yes. So, 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 see, you don't have the experience. You should have jumped in first. <laughs> so, 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 I was too late. I, I thought I should have thought about it. Well, so, yeah. so. So she's got holidays coming, of course, and has to figure out when to take them. And uh, no, yeah. February, uh, take some time. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, course. Oh, oh, here's Ayumi uh, San. Okay, okay, okay. Good. Hi. I, know, I understand. I Without wanting to tip off too much, I did some software changes last night. Okay, which part? What part? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good upgrade, isn't it? Well, I, if it works. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. You'll see. You'll see. Nothing to do. Just, just no, 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 no. Just, just do your normal work, and okay. and, and uh, you'll see some stuff that's different. That's all. <laughs> if it works. Ah, Yumi san. Another. Okay. Just they, come, come. So see what's going on. There's this ghost from the past here. We're on the streaming show. So, 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 so. This is, I know, it's Ayumi san, not the Ayumi san with the ghosts and the spiders and stuff. This is the other Ayumi san. This is the Ayumi Baron Maker Ayumi. And, and a few years ago, before she took time off, Shin Hanga Expert Printer a few years ago. I know, Suzu this. So, Suzu this. Aku janai, Suzu. I know, the block she's printing this morning is, oh, put it, put it, put it here. Where am I? It's really difficult. It's on uh, all. It's got metal, metal, t- metal, uh, metal stuff. So it's Susan of Also, maybe just Hajimaru mai ni hau oyu no shita de haburashi o zeta arat arat kudasai. Mo, de sho? So 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 so. So like, just nikawa de kata kata ku natta n desu kara. Just jikan ka kara. So, like, shime shite matte de arat arat kudasai. Susan ga water to grow near our own cup. So, so. Do you have the print me on the mask? I should zoom out a little bit. So, it's this it's the metal color here, the metallic at the top of Mount Fuji here. So, from the beginning, sure. なんかあのやり方いや覚えてるよはいそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそうそう
When we're going to Canada, I'm leaving on the 7th and coming back on the 22nd. And the 23rd, I think, is a stream day, but probably there won't be a stream on the 23rd. I'll, I'll post about this. Anyway, I'm gone from the 7th to the 22nd. This is the Baron Mickey. She's not making Barons anymore, really, at all. I know she got really good at it, learned what there was to learn, made a few Barons, and then, of course, there's no, there's no life in it. There's no business in it. So uh, she, had, she had practiced printing at the behest of her Baron teacher so that she could learn a bit of a printer's craft to learn how to make better Barons. And the upshot is she's ended up becoming a printer, of course. You know. There's a... There's a living available for printers. There's no living available in the current environment for people who make barons. She has two kids. They're in the daycare center these days. So some days she doesn't show up. She'll phone and, you know, one of the kids has got a fever. The daycare center says, sorry, can't take it. So she books off lots of, lots of days. Can't be helped. And another part of it, too, her husband is a police officer, so his hours can be extremely irregular and, and call on call and stuff. So she may be scheduled for doing work on any X given day and will call and say, sorry, her husband's shift has changed and she can't do that, stuff like this. Who was that? Yamada-san heading upstairs? Our young accounting guy? <clears throat> if you're confused because I've just chopped away a bunch of black lines, don't be confused. This block is for the hair. So these hair lines are going to stay. And beneath them you can see these are leftover lines from the, the hunched up. Well, in fact, I think that one I didn't need to carve either. I think that was actually her, no, no, that was her back. <laughs> I don't Which line is this? Oh, yeah, that line we didn't need. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Will there be a Canada stream? I don't think so, not this time. Last time I went for an extended period. I didn't want to leave the stream abandoned. This time I'm going only for two weeks and I'm really tight for time. I've got my mother to spend time with, brother and sister, my ex-daughter, her two kids, my other daughter, her two kids. There's a ton of family obligations. I'm going to be a busy guy over there. I don't really want to take all the camera gear, so I don't have a plan for streaming in Canada this time. It's just going to be a two-week break from this stream. You know, we're like, we're allowed to take holidays. We're allowed to take a break. So at this time, there is no plan for streaming over there. I'm sorry. Ex-daughter, I was going to say ex. I know, why did I say ex? It's not my ex-daughter, it's my daughter. I know, I was going to count ex-daughter, y-daughter, something. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not my ex-daughter. <laughs> It's Vancouver, BC. How's my mom? She's in nursing home life. She's not active at all. She can't do this stuff anymore. She can't join our streams. She had a stroke. So there's really nothing to report. Uh, my brother is her main care... Well, the, the staff at the nursing home are her main caretakers. My brother is there with her every day. He's sort of put on hold his plans for, for going out to Thailand right now. So my brother is, is the main family uh, looking after her. My sister drops in daily basis. My daughters drop in once a week or so. But mom is now, uh, she's now in a nursing home being cared for. So thanks for your thoughts. She won't be able to, to respond and participate anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was, in a way, a kind of a sad situation. She had a, a very small stroke. This was about a year ago, just before I left over there. She had a very small stroke, came out of it okay, and the decision had to be made whether to operate, uh, taking away whatever, I don't know, 
operate the, the arteries in her, in her throat, you know, to, to widen them. They had become clogged. And the operation, they gave us 50-50. She'll 50-50, she'll, she'll make it or she won't make it. She'll, she'll die on the table. Should we do it or not? And they said if the operation is successful, if she does make it through, she will be clear from this risk of having strokes from the constriction in her throat. And she made the call herself. She said, let's do this. If I don't wake up, that's all. It's, you know, goodbye. But if I do wake up, I'll be, have a happier, healthier life. So we did it, and the operation went forward, and she did go through. The operation was successful. It cleared, opened the, the arteries in, in her neck. Lots of good blood flow. And lots of good blood flow meant extra pressure somewhere else and another stroke the day later somewhere else in her brain. And that's the stroke that took her down. She can no longer knit. She can't read. She has difficulty controlling lots of her daily functions. She knows who she is, and she's not a happy camper. But uh, that's the way it has turned out. And her, you know, she is, of course, every day, why didn't I die during the first operation? It would have been better, blah, blah, blah. But none of us can control these things. So I'll be spending time with her. I'll be chilling out, sitting in her room. She knows who she is. She knows who I am. She knows the people around. She can have conversations. She just can't actually do stuff. So I'll be there just chilling out and spending as much time with her as I can. And the facility is really cool, really, really nice. She's in a place in Vancouver called Haro Center. I'm not speaking English, Japanese. It's H-A-R-O, Haro Center. And as far as I've been able to see, it looks like an excellent facility. You know? My brother has uh, good reports, the food, everything, you know. Super level of care. So, for those of you who knew her on the streams, dropping in, you know, I'll, I'll pass on your, your, you know, what can I say, your thoughts and stuff to her. But uh, she knows, she's aware this is going on still, but she just cannot participate. So. Yeah, she can't do knitting anymore. That's the one that took a while. She can't knit, she can't read, she can't watch and participate in these streams. So it's kind of just a lot of sitting around. It's a lot of sitting around. So. Did I ever tell her you have fans back in Sidall, Halifax? I don't remember this story. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> she, she herself, she has very mixed feelings about the place she came from. I know. I don't know what she's feeling or thinking about all this right now because I'm not really up on her mental state and stuff like this. But uh, she left Britain behind her, you know. For me, when I became an adult, I wanted to go back and visit England. I wanted to go visit Halifax, the place I came from. It was interesting for me. For her, none of that place was interesting at all. Been there, I got out of there, bang. So if I said now, hey, somebody's from Halifax, they want to chat with you, she'd like be... <laughs> <laughs> She'd let me, do I have to? I don't know, you know. Remember, she was there in a very, very, very young part of her life, many, many, many millions of years ago, when it was a very different place. And I would think right now that a place like that, those, those villages, those towns and in, in, in cities in Yorkshire, they're perhaps quite uh, personable, perhaps nice. In her era, they were kind of black hell holes. So her image of what a place like that is like and what it's really like now might be quite different. It's probably normal, happy, livable, comfortable place. But for her, it would have been gloomy, black, dark. And the people would have been a different kind of person than they are now, you know. So, so I don't think she's in any way nostalgic for the, the Britain that she left.
I don't know, I shouldn't speak too much about her ideas and her point of view, you know, of course speaking for her, but... Uh, for me to visit such a place now would be really interesting. I would like to see that place and learn a bit more about it. But for her, it would be, I think, less so. so. Are we okay for time, or am I running into, I know... Oh, it's show and tell time. It's show and tell time. Yeah, the mills and stuff, that's where my parents met. They met in a mill, I know, Harris's. The mill they met was a place called Harris's, and this would have been in the first years of the war. They would have met there in, I don't know, 1940, 41, 42, somewhere around there. They were pulled out of school. The war was on. People like my parents, the education for them was irrelevant. The, the men went to war and the, the teenagers and stuff were pulled out of school and went into the mills. So um, a mill there called Harris's was where my parents met. And they tell some great stories about this. They used to. And my dad, oh my, well I can't, I, I can't. Uh, my dad told stories that my mother wouldn't want to hear. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, Huddersfield, all local, yes, so, 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 so. No, when I say my dad told stories, not about him and somebody else, he tells, me and my brother, he tells stories about <laughs> whatever. Okay, what are we going to do for Chantel? I have an embarrassment of riches. There is a box here. I can't reach it with a mic on. Just one second. I think we'll start with this one. Let's do this. There's a box here. And I don't really know why the guy used a box. <clears throat> this is, I believe, a selection of small woodbark prints, but I don't know why we ended up being with a box with a, don't put anything on top of it, don't bend this, don't spill water on it. This person is paranoid in the extreme. But let's have a look, because inside here should be some kind of nice selection of small woodblock prints. Oh, I see, it's a reused box. This is, this part's been torn. So the, the, it's not the woodbot prints that are all the caution. It must have been whatever he had in it before. So place your bets. As somebody says, how many layers do we have here? I don't know how many layers. What's our world record for layers? I haven't a clue. Depends how you count it, I guess. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is what he's done. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's excavate first then. We have a package of prints. Is that it? No, I think there should be more. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I see. I'm going to have to be careful not to throw stuff away by mistake. Oh, that was it. Okay. Should we start with the small one, the middle one, or the large one? <coughs> Let's start with the middle one. Actually, it's so long ago that these were bought on auction. 
there's a letter on the flap. A letter on the flap. You mean on the box? There's a letter on the flap. It's the transport stuff. It's my address. What are you talking about? Oh, so there is. Ah, oh, interesting, interesting. Okay, this is from the auction guy, and it's their own little checklist. It's checklist. Have you checked at all items that should be inside? I know nothing is forgotten. It's their own little check, 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 ready, safe to be shipped to people. We ourselves in Mokohankan is thinking about this. We've had a bunch of issues recently. Our, our staff in Ome, our shipping staff, is really, really, really stressed and overloaded at some times a year, at Christmas time and then at the beginning of the... Uh, of the uh, subscription series and there have been mistakes ayano san has got emails and somebody says i got the package i ordered print number 51 it's print number 61 inside there have been mistakes and uh, it happens more often with subscription prints they get number one two three four and then number four again instead of number five whatever uh, we it, so we're trying to minimize this and I'm not sure how much I can tell a story here about the people who are involved. We've got a bunch of different shippers, and we've got a one shipper who says, no, not me, not me, it wasn't me. <laughs> and actually, it was that person. So to try and minimize the mistakes, the first step is to, you know, accept responsibility and then learn how to, to make it better. And so we are thinking about maybe putting in a system where we have those little pieces of paper packed by Dave and it goes inside the box so when people open it and there's a mistake we know like where to sort of feed it back so my viewpoint on staff mistakes is is you know is you know it's pretty basic i think if somebody makes a mistake it's okay whatever you have to let them know they've made the mistake preferably in private and you try and figure out what went wrong so it won't happen again if the same person makes the same mistake again it's now different. You've either got one of two cases. The system is prone to making mistakes. So the software is maybe the machine you built, the button is difficult to understand, or the software is difficult to understand. If the same mistake keeps happening, it can possibly be a system mistake, which means it's the boss's problem. Or it could be that you've simply got somebody who is incompetent. They are the wrong person in the wrong job. Either way, it's the manager's problem. What do we got here? I'm too busy talking, not enough busy. As you can see, we have some pochibukuro, some envelopes here today. Let's zoom in and see what we've caught. Yeah, there's no yelling and screaming at people for mistakes. No way, ever, 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 ever. Mistakes at the end of the day are um, the manager's problem, not the employee's problem. They are little envelopes for handing out money. There's two, two packages of them here. Let's just go through quickly. And this again is part of what we said back at the beginning of this stream. Remember I was talking about Japanese prints as being pleasurable objects. Now, these things have a function. You put your money in and you pay your calligraphy teacher, but the main point is just to make beauty. And look at this. Do you get what's happened here? They've printed this with an extra impression to make a gradation on the tree. A gradation. Like, why bother? Because it looks more beautiful. So we have just simply, this is a willow. I, I can't read this, I'm sorry. I know this is pretty, I know, cursive script here. I'm sorry, maybe we have someone with much better ability than I to be able to read this. We had a dangaksha or somebody, I'm not sure. I can't read it, I'm sorry. It's too much, it's over my pay grade.
This is, I believe, it's a bridge for a kotal. It looks like a part of a musical instrument, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think that might be a kotal bridge. And again, we have lettering in silver. The silver here is not done with real silver, it's done with aluminum powder. There was no reason to, to use precious metals, and anyway, even if we had used silver, it would have gone black. Yeah, John's talking about the software for reading archaic cursive. Yes, this is not archaic. This is just delicate, ladylike cursive. There's nothing archaic about this. This is modern. Simply, Dave is not uh, up to snuff on here reading this. This is not specifically archaic. I'm sorry not to be able to quickly read and translate everything for you, but uh, they could be poems, I guess. It could be small poetry. I don't know. I'm sorry. These are called pochi bukuro. Pochi bukuro. They're woodblock printed small envelopes, and their purpose would have been to be used for paying money. You wouldn't use this if you're paying money in the 7-Eleven buying a hamburger. Of course not. This would be something like when money had to be given in a bit of a more, uh, bit of a more elegant situation. The object we're seeing here, I think this is a, uh, a bird scaring thing. We see the lines with a wooden plate hanging on it, and then on the wooden plate there are various little pieces of wood that are hanging from a piece of string. And in the wind, all those little pieces of wind, pieces of wood bash against each other and scare birds. But I wouldn't be opposed to the situation that there's another message being passed on here in the shape of these pieces here. Although it looks like a bird scarer, there quite possibly is another meaning here. Very possibly. And everything you see here is woodblock prints. It's all carved and printed. Everything. All the lettering you see is not hand-drawn, it's carved on a woodblock and then printed, just like you saw me doing this morning. Beautiful little collection of woodblock prints. Someone's asking when these were made. This specific group, I'm really not sure. I know this sort of thing was very, very common all through the 20th century, from the end of Meiji period through Taisho, through Showa. Are these pre-war or post-war? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Some of them look a bit more toned than the others. I really, sorry, I don't know. If I had to just put one number as a guess, I'd put close pre-war, 1935 or something like that. But I could be wrong by, by a decade. Look at this. They've done, uh, they've done the, the printing to make it look like real calligraphy with strong black going down weaker, strong black, weaker, black, going down weaker. They've imitated the actual flow of ink in the person's brush. What kind of skill level would be needed to carve calligraphy like this? Well, I could do this, and we do this sort of all the time. This is, this is not uh, beyond belief. I've carved lots and lots and lots of calligraphy like this. Yeah, you need, you need a nice touch. Okay, let's look in the neighboring pack here. Can't see, can't feel. Here we go.
look what we've got here. It seems like a full set. They're, in, they're all sized going from larger down, 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 down to smaller. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It'll be a full set. Oh, that's part of the original wrapping. Look at this. There's the original thread that was wrapped around these things. They're crumbling. I've got to be really careful. They're crumbling to touch. Look at this. I don't think these are for money, you know. I'm not 100% sure, not even remotely sure actually, what these are for. What would you be putting inside these things? I'm, I'm, it's not for money at all. Money wouldn't fit in there. Is there one that's open? Not sealed. This one. Uh, you see the way it's made? Can I get can I zoom in closer? The wrapping is here. And this one, two, three is all one side, folded paper. Look at this, one, two, three, this side. And it's all woodblock printed. And it folds, here we go. It actually opens inside. A set of 10 and it looks like they're sized going down smaller 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 to get to the bottom I don't know what they're called I know when their money gifts are being passed out you've got the wrapping paper that wraps around with the string around it and quite often you see on the wrapping paper you see this shape I don't know how to describe this shape, but you see this very frequently on those gift wrapping papers, and I don't know the significance of it. Is, has somebody been mentioning it to me here? Has somebody been talking about this? Special folding paper for different gifts. Abalone, I don't know this, so. They was thinking about toothpicks, but I, I don't kind of think this would be toothpick material. I really wouldn't think so. I'm going to hold off talking much more about it because I really don't have a good clear image of this, of what they're used for. Nor do I know what they're called. But I do know that they're all made the same way with Japanese woodblock printmaking. They do. They look like those modern style chopstick wrappers, which I guess maybe has come from some kind of tradition like this. I don't know. Okay, there you go. Quite a little bit different show and tell than our recent dabblings with bird books. But anyway, nonetheless, there we are.
Yeah, just pre-war. This kind of stuff. There's nobody, nobody is dealing with this kind of thing anymore at all. This is all pre-war, 1930s. I'll show them again on the next stream. This is Thursday, Saturday morning. We'll do another show and tell, but I'll also come back to this. Now that these are open and we've seen these, I will ask around. I'll get a bit more information on what these might be. We've got, we've got here, somebody's asking information. Somebody's paying information. Uh, somebody's saying, the, the Japanese comment here is talking about the fact that these are similar to what are called noshi. This is the paper that you wrap around these gifts. Awabi. Hmm. Okay. Okay. We'll pass that on then. My system is not copying here from. What I don't know, this might be an imitation. The little things that we have inside here, whether this is actually the abalone that our commentators are talking about here, or whether this is an imitation, I don't know. I could believe that this actually is fish skin. I can't tell, I'm sorry. But I could believe that that might be actually fish skin. I'll report back when I learn more. Okay, where we go. This is Thursday. I'll be back to you now. Two more days on Saturday with two more streams left to go before we head back to Canada. Oh, not back to Canada, over to Canada. Good grief. And it's clearing up. It was hazy in the morning. Now it's clearing up. Okay, guys, thanks very much. I'm on my way. I'll see you now two days from now, and I'm not sure what work I'll be doing. I may save this carving work because I've got lots of other things to do. I may save this carving work for Saturday. So I'm probably going to be working on the same block at that time. Thanks very much, gang, and I'll see you in a couple of days. Bye for now. Coffee time.